Marty, it's Adam, and I'm coming to you from AATS in Philadelphia. Uh, very excited to be here with Dr. Jay Ramon. And we've got a great question for Dr. Ramon. It's from Jane, and she writes, Adam, I've been told that I will need heart valve surgery within the next 24 months due to aortic regurgitation. I've read good and bad things about the use of wires to close the sternum. Are there any other technologies used to help the chest heal? So that's a very good question. So, Jane, um, if you can imagine uh, the bone, the breastbone, sits like this, and this is what we've got to get through to get into your chest to uh, do the surgery. Historically, when cardiac surgery first became a specialty, bone was lashed together with wire. And so, uh, pioneering cardiac surgeons in the 50s and 60s actually used wire to, uh, you know, circle around the bone and keep it together. Uh, orthopedic surgery, plastic surgery, neurosurgery, they've all developed uh, techniques where instead of using wire to go around uh, the bone, they actually use plates. And if you can imagine doing uh, carpentry at home over the weekend, you'd never consider lashing two bits of wood together with wire. It's not very effective if, if you want that to keep moving all the time. So even taking a leaf from uh, carpentry or modern day do-it-yourself stuff at home, you know that when you do joints, you know, around a window, for instance, you use, you know, plates and screws. So all other bones in the body are handled with plates and screws, whether it's, your, it's a bone in the cheek, a bone in your arm, uh, anywhere. So I think that the great um, advancement at the University of Chicago was some plastic surgeons in the mid-90s told us that this is the best way to close bone, especially in high-risk patients. So we adapted this, and over the past maybe uh, eight years, we've developed, refined, and expanded this to include it as a standard treatment for closing bone, so much so that patients have a lot less pain, they're able to get back on their feet much quicker, and it's also facilitated the ability to do all these things through small incisions. So, if you can imagine, going back to that breast bone of the sternum, as it sits like this on your chest, these are the plates and screws I was talking about. So, this plate and it's screwed into the the plate is actually screwed into the bone, and this makes it very solid. So one of the um, cornerstones of bone healing is lack of movement, and you can imagine that the chest is constantly moving. You're breathing, you're coughing, you're sneezing, and all those things hurt like hell. And I'm sure Adam can attest to that. The, sne but, the sneezing in particular. Yeah. <laughs> so when you actually have something that's fixed rigidly, this, this is what we call rigid fixation with plates and screws, that little bit of movement is obviated and so patients actually have a much better chance of getting the bone to heal effectively. So now if you can imagine, let's stretch this one or take this one step further. Your aortic valve sits in this upper portion up here. So there's no real need for you to go all the way down here. Let's say we just make a small T-shaped incision in the bone. It's so much easier to fix this with plates than with wires because with wires you're still concerned about whether the bone would come together and you know align together. But now with plates and screws, it's actually facilitated us, expanded our ability to do all these complex operations of small incisions. So that is the big benefit of using plates and screws and we do it even for other things. We, if we do it through the side, we can actually make a, a, a crack in the rib. I know it sounds bad but it actually completely takes away the pain because we fix it at the end with a small plate across, across the rib. So those are the differences in terms of bony fixation and in terms of recovery uh, to a patient like yourself. Great. Well, thanks, Dr. Ramon, for sharing that with us. I, I hope that helped uh, all of you out there. I know we learned a lot, and you've used this with folks like Danny Thrall, if I remember right, the yes. swimmer. Um, so thanks for all that you do at the University of Chicago and stopping by with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Keep on ticking.